Hey guys, I'm Jane Dupree, and today we are doing a full-on, literally everything about pool tutorial. Uh, from beginner to advanced. Uh, to the advanced players, this first part of the video is for beginners. Uh, so people who don't play pool, uh, maybe have never shot pool before, maybe shoot pool, uh, but don't really have correct fundamentals or don't know uh, a few of the more basic things. So if you are more advanced, just skip further ahead into the video. Uh, but right here, we're just going to talk about all the basics, the grip, the stance, how you stand, uh, how you hold it, every, every, everything, your bridge hand. Uh, this is all the fun foundation for you pocketing balls. Uh, once you get the proper stance and grip, you're most definitely going to pocket more balls than last uh, time. So first, the first thing to talk about is just how you hold the cue in the back. So I hold my cue with a good kind of firm grip. Uh, and you see a lot of the best pool players, usually the Filipino pool players, they play with two fingers and they're really, really loose. Uh, I would not play like that. It's, it's giving up some of the control, and you can see that in their stroke that they're giving up control. But the reason they do that, and they're so good, is because in the Philippines, literally everybody does that. So if you've been taught to do that over a certain amount of years, changing that will drastically decrease your game for a good time period. So they just kept their stroke, and they're okay with that, and that is fine. Not everyone has to have the perfect stroke. The great player to watch if you're trying to have amazing fundamentals is John Mora. That's John M-O-R-R-A. He's a great player from Canada, has absolutely amazing fundamentals, and it's just the guy is unbeatable when he's at his top. So I hold it a good grip. Uh, my main my pinky doesn't really do much, except it, it's it's kind of there. Uh, but we're just holding it like we'd hold anything else. It's like this shape. You're just holding it. Whatever's comfortable. If you're comfortable, it should be all good. Uh, you also don't want to squeeze really, really hard on it uh, because that puts a little hesitation in your stroke. Uh, you just you don't want any hesitation. You want everything to feel as natural and smooth as possible. Uh, so next, your other hand. So this is called your bridge hand. If you're right-handed, your left hand is your bridge hand. And a lot of times, players wear gloves on their bridge hand and usually the players in the north don't wear gloves on their bridge hand because of uh the reason players more southern located play with a glove is because of the humidity i live in louisiana it's absolutely awful with the humidity so if i don't have that glove on this shaft is constantly uh sticky with this uh chalk and the moisture in the air uh, and it, it stops it. You see that hesitation in that stroke, how it's not going all the way through. And then when you put this glove on, smooth everything out. So it's just to keep it smoother if you're wondering uh, why the majority of the top players play with the glove. Uh, but we're going to talk about the basic formation of your bridge hand. Uh, we're starting with the open bridge. Open bridge just means that everything is open as opposed to the closed bridge. These are the two main bridges in the game. Uh, and occasionally, uh, you, you, you kind of morph them into different things as you need them. So like if you're like on a rail or something, like open, close, uh, you just you have to adapt. You have to come up with some crazy stuff. Also, the tripod bridge is one that we'll go over too. So those are the three I'm going to give you today. So open bridge. Usually, I, I kind of have my fingers in like a V shape, kind of. Uh, it, it's it's kind of a V shape. The most important thing is that it's supported. You want great support in your hand. I also have my thumb pressed against my index finger, and that creates this little line right here. And that's actually the line that your cue is going to follow on. So that little crease between, that little spot between this knuckle and then the rise of this thumb, that is where the cue is going to rest. And it should be really stable from there. Like you can wiggle it back and forth uh, side to side and it will not come out. 
if you press hard it will but uh, you wouldn't do this in your stroke so and then for the closed bridge so we're going to morph from our open bridge into our closed bridge and our closed bridge looks like this uh, so it's, it's still the same kind of V shape for support uh, this part of our palm is not really on the table it, it's kind of most of it the weight of the hand is on the left side over here uh, if your left hand is your bridge hand but we have our index finger on top of our middle finger and our thumb pressed against our index finger and our middle finger and that's creating this little nice groove right there uh, that the cue can easily slide through uh, this is for when you're shooting with more power because there's more support uh, and when you are shooting draw shots because there's more it's more accurate with having to shoot hard because uh, it's, it's, it's enclosed it can't go anywhere as with the open bridge you can kind of lean off a bit uh, but the open bridge is also like really helpful like if you're using the open bridge like this for a regular shot just shooting but sometimes it can go a little astray if you're shooting with power or a lot of backspin so we're adding our closed bridge just in case we need a lot of backspin uh, or a little more support now tripod bridge it's exactly what you think it'd be it's a tripod with your hands something like this you can have fingers in the back for support we don't use it too, too often. Uh, normally, I'm just open bridging it if I'm over a ball, because you don't need to elevate too, too much to get over a ball like that, which is something we'll cover in the more advanced part. Uh, but tripod bridge is sometimes used for a jump shot. I don't use the tripod bridge too much. Uh, I just generally, you don't, you don't really need that tripod bridge. Just open bridge, elevated over there. So if you need to put topspin on your cue ball with your open bridge, all you do is just lift those fingers up like that. Uh, closed bridge, all right, you just lift those fingers up. If you need backspin, flatten your hand or flatten your hand with your closed bridge. So it, those two are the d dominant ones, but the tripod bridge can be helpful in a few situations. So now that we got that, that down, just the basics of holding the cue. Here comes the most important part in actually pocketing a ball, and that is your feet. So your feet make the line. Normally, some people aim with their head, like like maybe snooker players. They hang with their head and they get down in that box stance and pocket a ball like that, which is cool if you're a snooker player. Uh, but the normal American or European, somewhat European, uh, pool stance is something like this. So I'm just going to demonstrate it first and we're going to walk through it. Just like that. So you see my feet are pretty wide. I'm a tall person. I'm six foot three. Uh, so I can make a really wide base. You want a lot of support uh, on, you, you want your whole weight distributed, distributed, uh, and you want to feel very, very supportive and strong when you're down on a shot. You want to feel confident. But the main thing that makes up the pocketing of the ball is the back foot. So if you're right-handed, your right foot is the one that goes in back. And it, it, your right foot is always going to be tilted. It's angled outwards uh, a little more than this foot. This foot's more forward. This one's angled outwards. We always step into a shot. And the way we find where our back foot needs to be, something called the pocket line. So first you're going to find the line from where you want the object ball to go, so where I want the seven ball to go, and then we find our contact point from there. So we see that we need to hit it there we need to hit the seven ball where my finger is to make it in that pocket. So then you draw that line from your cue ball to that point where you need to hit. If you extend that line through the table, your back foot, the front of my back foot is on that line. And then I'm just moving that foot forward 
and then you're automatically going to make the ball if you line your feet up properly. Like in theory, don't shoot actual pool like this, but you can get down, look away, and still make that ball because your feet are what aim for you. So all of your aiming is done on the pool ball before you even get down on the shot. So you aim before. So if we're shooting these in order, you see, I've already aimed. When I'm down there, I'm just down there to shoot. I find my pocket line, my contact line is there, I find that line, my back foot's on that line, step into that shot, find the pocket line, and you should be comfortable enough to where you don't need to find that pocket line with your cue, uh, or just briefly put it up if it's a really tough shot. But like straight in shots, we're always putting that back foot down, moving that other foot up, rolling that ball in or shooting however you're gonna shoot the shot. Uh, so that is the basics of the grip and the stance. Okay, so now since we've talked about the grip and the stance and how to pocket a ball, we are going to talk about the more strategic side of the game uh, position play, which is playing position for your next shot. So not just focus on making this ball, but making this ball and having a good shot on the next ball, uh, and so on and so on. So to do that, to do that, we need to know what different spins on the cue ball do. So we're starting with a stop shot, which means that the cue ball, you get down on your shot, and the cue ball stops right there after you shoot it. This can really only be done with straight in shots. So straight in shot, your cue ball stops where it was. And you do this by aiming slightly below center on the cue ball. So your tip is not at the center of the cue ball, it's slightly below the center of the cue ball. And this causes your cue ball, when you are shooting it into a ball, Hitting slightly below center causes it to slide across the felt. So it's sliding. It's not spinning backwards and it's not rolling forwards. It is sliding across the felt and all the energy is gone as it hits the ball. All the energy is transferred so your cue ball stops right there. So second, we're going to talk about draw. Draw or backspin or screw back is hitting below center on the cue ball to make the cue ball come backwards, just like that. So different angles cause different draw effects, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Like if we have an angle over here, it's going to draw into the rail, but it's always going to come backwards in some sense. So draw is hitting further below center on your cue ball. And the physics behind that one is when you hit further below center on your cue ball, your cue ball is spinning backwards while going into this ball. Once it hits it, all the energy comes out, comes backwards. So that's why sometimes when you play a stop shot, it may come backwards just a little bit. If you have just a tiny bit of spin on that and it's not exactly sliding, it may slide back just a tad. Uh, but the next shot we're gonna talk about is follow or run through or top spin uh, looks like this. So you see how our cue ball follows the object ball. Uh, that is caused by top spin. The physics behind this one, it is rolling. It is rolling forward as it hits the ball. So it stops for just a second and then continues on through. So that one is just hitting anywhere above center on the cue ball. Uh, now let's talk about something important, what center on the cue ball does. So center on the cue ball, if these two balls are really close, center on the cue ball can act as a stop shot. If they're close, center on the cue ball acts as a stop shot at a medium to hard speed. If they're far at a medium to hard speed, center on your cue ball acts as follow. It's a little strange. 
uh, you're just going to have to work with it. Also, at a slow speed close together, center on your cue ball acts as a tiny bit of follow. Just runs through just a little bit. Uh, so, even at, at a far distance, at high speed, center will still act as a little bit of run through. Uh, so the further back you are to get a stop shot, the lower and harder on your cue ball you're going to have to hit. So that is why a stop shot at a distance like this is pretty difficult to stop it exactly right there. Uh, so it kind of slides around just a little bit. So the further back uh, you are, the lower you're going to have to hit and the harder you're going to have to hit. You can substitute speed for spin. And what that means is right here we can hit just a little bit below center and stop that cue ball at a high speed. Or we could do something like this where we're at the same distance, we're hitting really, really low, but hitting it softer. It came back just a little bit, so you see we could have hit even slower. Uh, so hitting low, hitting low, low on the cue ball and hitting slow can be the same as hitting a little bit higher and hitting at a higher speed. Uh, it's a little confusing at first. The thing you don't want to do is hit too soft and have your cue ball run through the ball. Some may ask, why does the cue ball run through the ball if I just use low at a slow speed? Well, your cue ball starts going backwards because of the low. Then it goes into that sliding effect, that's the stop shot. And then it goes into the roll. And you can kind of see that if I grab a striped ball from down here, you can kind of see that effect. So if I set up the stripe like that, we're hitting low, slow is stop shot. And you see how it just slides and comes to a stop. But if we're hitting really low and too slow, you can see how it spins backwards at first, slides for a millisecond, and then starts to roll forward before contacting that ball. Uh, so that is the physics behind those shots. Now, you need to learn what that stop shot type of shot does with an angle. So with an angle, there's no longer a stop shot because the cue ball does not stop. With an angle, we call it a stun shot. Uh, so a stun shot is just a tad bit below center again. And with center, this shot would look like this. Looks like that. But with stun, see with, with center, it rolls forward just a little bit, as, as I said. But with stun, it follows a 90 degree tangent line. That is very, very important. A 90 degree tangent line. What does that mean? So remember how earlier when we were talking about aiming, we were talking about the pocket line. Pocket line is the line between the object ball and the pocket. So if we take this line and we're doing a stun shot, our cue ball is coming 90 degrees from that line. So it's going to come into here. And that is exactly what will happen. So it's really, really simple to control. Especially with side pocket shots is where it matters the most. Like if you have an angle here, where's my cue ball going with stun? It's probably going somewhere near that first diamond. Just like that. Uh, so, you need the next thing that we're going to go into is basic stun shot position. So, stun shot position. So, position again is playing, shooting one ball with the intention on getting on another ball. So, now we're going to talk about using stun shots to do that. So let's go ahead and take this two ball. We're going to play the two ball, but play position on the three ball next. So a stun shot, we know our pocket line is this. So 90 degrees from that line is going into there. 
So if we play a stun shot, we should have a good shot on our three ball next. So that is the most basic example of a stun shot that I can give you guys. Very, very basic, just slightly below center on the cue ball. This one right here is probably the most useful one though. So this is the one I demonstrated with. You see our pocket line, our cue ball is naturally going to come into this rail about at the first diamond. Uh, but our cue ball is going to go one, two, and then that stuns bringing it into this rail and then into the line of the three ball, into the pocket line of the three ball. So if we would just play it with just a little bit of stun, see our cue ball coming around the table, bam, perfect for our three ball. So just basic, basic stun shot position. Uh, and it can go from basic to being a little more difficult, meaning we're on the wrong side of the pocket line of the two ball. And with a stun shot, it'll bring us into there. Draw is going to bring it off the rail back towards here a little bit. So this one is harder. But that stun shot bringing it into the rail. Down here for a shot on our three ball. Just like that. So that, that is basic stun shot position. And now we're going to get into some more details on position play. So now that you know your stun shot lines, we can start to get into more uh, deeper position play. So we're going to take out, let's take out two balls. And we're going to talk about the pocket line for a second. The pocket line and the tangent lines are really, really important. Tangent line is where the cue ball is coming off at the 90 degree, like the 90 degree tangent line with the stun shot. That is very, very important. So like pocket, 90 degree tangent line, you know where your cue ball is going. Pocket line is a line between the two ball and the pocket, just like that. So this is the pocket line, no matter where the cue ball is. The cue ball's here, this is the pocket line. Cue ball's here, this is the pocket line. So the pocket line, we always talk about wanting to be on the correct side of the pocket line. I may say the right side of the pocket line a few times. Uh, just make sure it's in the context not write the direction. I will try to use the word correct, uh, but sometimes just natural instinct tells me the right side of the pocket line. Uh, I mean correct, not like the actual right side. Uh, but in this case, the right, the correct side of the pocket line means where the cue ball will naturally go for good position on the next ball. So you look at where do you want to be on your next ball. I want to be straight in on my next ball. So you look at the pocket line of this ball. If you want to be straight in, you got to be somewhere along the pocket line. Where on this ball will give you a good position on the pocket line just using a simple, simple position shot. Answer is straight in. So if we are straight in and just roll that ball in, now we're along the pocket line for the four ball and it's really really easy to make that four ball. So that example is not as clear as it could be. So we're going to take it off table. So let's say we're playing this two ball. We have ball in hand. We can put the cue ball anywhere we want but after the two ball we have to make the three ball. So, if we are dead straight in on this shot, we do our stop shot. There is not a good shot on the three ball right now. The only shot you got is one of these kicks that's very, very hard to control. So we already know straight in is not good unless you are playing a really hard draw shot, which is kind of advanced for where we're at right now, but it's, it's not the easiest way to get to that shot. And that is what pool is all about. 
pool is all about making it easy. Making the shots easy. So the correct side of the pocket line that will naturally bring our cue ball to that three ball, only using like center ball or center high, it, the way I prefer is on the actual right side of this pocket line. So the right side is the correct side because if you just roll that ball in, cue ball is naturally heading towards the three ball. And then the left side of the pocket line is also good at about this angle. Because if you roll this ball in with high, center high, your cue ball will be tracking for the three ball. You could also play the stun shot that I showed you a few minutes ago from this side. Hitting low on your cue ball, stunning it into the rail, bringing it around table, good shot on the three ball. So we want in position where we can just roll that three ball in. That is the main goal, to make it as easy as possible. Easiest one in my opinion is just rolling that ball in. Because you just have to shoot either center, center high, maybe a little bit of left English, which we will get into later. Uh, but that makes that easier for me. Uh, but the main, the best way to practice position is three balls on the table. Three balls on the table is the best way to pack, practice position. We're going to talk about the pocket line. With This will go in, into a really good pocket line example right here, uh, being on the correct side of the line. So if we are not on the correct side of the line, let's say the correct side of the line of the eight ball, the, line, the side of the line that we need to be on is this side. Because then we're, our cue ball is naturally going to roll over here for the nine after the eight. So we're playing the three, then the eight, then the nine. So we have to figure out where do we want to land on our eight ball so we're good on the nine. We're always thinking three balls in advance, no matter how many balls are on the table. We're thinking in increments of three balls. So if I end up on the wrong side of the pocket line, I'm not on the actual right side of the pocket line. I'm on the left side of the pocket line. This means I'd have to play a shot like that where something could go wrong or I could still not have a good shot opposed to playing a shot like this and just making the nine ball next. So a good run out with that pattern looks like this. So we want to be on the right side of that pocket line. So we need to put ourselves on the right side of that pocket line where our cue ball naturally heads towards this eight ball. Then this shot, stun shot using our 90 degree line. This shot, however you want to play it, I'm going to play another stun shot just to kind of leave my cue ball somewhere around there. But you see how easy pool can become by just going in increments of three balls. So this run out right here, let's, let's go here. So right here, right side of the four ball, I want to get straight in or on the left side of the pocket line. So that way I can roll forward into my six ball, but I want to be above the pocket line of the six ball on this left side. So I can play a stun shot into the rail that brings me into the line of the seven. So you saw how we were thinking three balls in advance even though there's four balls on the table. I'm going to throw out five balls here for our last example like this. Okay, so they're a little more spread out here. So this shot, I'm going to pocket the one ball up there. Now I'm thinking about my six ball right now. 
is how far in advance I'm thinking. And you see how we ended up dead straight with our four ball. This time, I want to be on the right side, the right direction side of the six ball, so my cue ball naturally goes towards uh, that seven. So like that. Actually, I can just roll my six ball in because position on the eight is like a stun shot natural position. It's actually center ball rolling that in brings us right dead straight in with the eight ball in the side pocket. So you see how we're always thinking in three ball patterns. So running out repeatedly three ball patterns is the best way to improve your position. Okay, so that is it for part one of this video, the more beginner style. If you are looking for the advanced video, uh, it is about to come out. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the subscribe button down below. If you want to be notified when I post a new video, you can click the uh, bell icon. Uh, it looks like a little bell. It sends you notifications, sends you an email saying that I've uploaded a new video. Uh, please guys go support me on my Patreon. I have my Patreon link uh, linked in the description. It's a website where you can pledge like $5, $10 a month for me, uh, to me in return for pr a free private lesson uh, or you get to join this awesome class that I teach. Uh, where it's only select a few people that get to watch uh, this class. And it has secret little tips like on racking and on different stuff like that that I do not share on my public channel. So if you want to be a part of that group, uh, go down in the link in the description, select the tier for you, uh, and it will be very, very greatly appreciated. Help me recover my felt, cues, lights, cameras, action, everything. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.